We continue to decode the results of the elections. Three big wins for the BJP in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh with the state of Telangana going to the Congress. How do we read these victories in the run-up to 2024? Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh in particular have been unexpected wins from the Congress perspective. Kamal Nath till the very end was arguing that he would manage to take the state of Madhya Pradesh. For the Congress in Telangana, that has been the one source of solace where the BRS, which used to be known as the TRS, is really and truly on the back foot Till moments ago, KCR was in fact uh, fighting a very tough fight in one of the two seats that he is contesting in Kamareri. To decode the results, we're joined by two of the finest political minds. One is now an active politician, another uh, political pundit. Uh, Yogendra Yadav is with us. Mr. Yadav, of course, is the national convener of the Bharat Jodo Abhiyan. Thank you for joining us. But in his past life has been what Yogendra does today. Yogendra, uh, uh, I, I beg your pardon, what Yashwant does today. Yashwant Deshmukh, a political analyst and psychologist with Seawater, is with us. It's good to have you back with us, uh, Yashwant. Uh, Yogendra Ji, aap se shuru karti. Uh, you know, in the morning, you were talking about how the Congress must reflect on why it can't convert winnable elections into victories. The number of the numbers are a lot more clear since when we were talking. If you look at a big political picture, what do you see? Uh, Barka, first thing first, it's a setback. It's a setback not just for Congress. It's a setback for all those like me. And I'm glad you introduced me as a political activist, which is what I am. All of us who want to see a change in this country in 2024, it's a setback. Yes, Telangana is uh, a moral booster for the Congress party, almost a model of what Congress party can do to recover in places that it can convert uh, a defeat into a victory. Uh, at the same time, uh, the results of Telangana are no uh, cannot match the negative message that comes from the three states, where at least in two of them, Congress has almost snatched a defeat out of the jaws of victory. If you had asked me uh, six months ago, I would have said Chhattisgarh is pakka for Congress, Madhya Pradesh, Nikali Ligi, Rajasthan is iffy, and in uh, Telangana, Congress should be happy if they are a respectable second. If you asked me one week ago, I would have said Telangana is pakka, Congress is winning. Uh, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh margins would go down, but ho sakta hai, they'll kind of scrape through. Rajasthan mein baat nahi ban rahi hai. That would have been my impression. But the results are very different. And it is, uh, statistically, you can say that it's not much loss for the Congress for 2024, because out of these 82 seats, Congress had won only six last time. And after the result today, Congress will actually improve because in Telangana, it should win now at least 10 seats or so. But that is statistical consolation. The fact is that in terms of morale, in terms of perception, in terms of uh, uh, a cadre uh, thinking and the overall mood in the country, this would impact the Congress and the opposition negatively. What do you think you misread, Yogendraji? You say it's a setback. You say it's a setback. What did you misread? You clearly misread Madhya Pradesh. You clearly misread, uh, in a sense, Kamal Nath's uh, confidence. Chhattisgarh, obviously, you misread. Where did this misleading happen and how did it happen? Uh, Chhattisgarh, I must confess, I was actually not there physically. So, I, I, as I said repeatedly, I'm drawing upon what I hear, you know, here and say from intelligent people. Uh, around. Madhya Pradesh, I have visited three or four times. I'm sure you would have done so. Every journalist has done so. Uh, yes, there was no outright anger against uh, Shivraj Singh government, but there was a fatigue, uh, which, you know, a government which would have been almost lost, had gone five years ago, came back through the back door, and, and governed in a way which is not particularly distinguished. I'm sure uh, decent BJP people would tell you that there wasn't much to write home about uh, Shivraj Singh Chauhan's last government of the last four years. So there was widespread sense of uh, fatigue. And all said and done, anyone would tell you Congress fought a 
2018. 2018, Congress was a fractious house, divided house. This time they were, they had only one leader. And right down at the booth level, Congress was somewhat in a better shape. Congress in the best of shape is no match for the BJP. But relatively speaking, it was in a slightly better position this time. So given all this, there was a sense that yes, Congress is and on the street. You heard overall positive sentiments. What went wrong for the Congress now that I look at it? Uh, two big things I, you know, one, of course, uh, the much claimed uh, Ladli Behna Yojana. The BJP came up with the scheme, the BJP delivered. Election Commission kept mum, while the same Election Commission objected to BRS giving something similar to the voters of Telangana. Uh, and last, inst last installment was delivered only a few days before election. But that alone does not explain something as big as this. There are two other mistakes that I can think of in the Congress. One is that the Congress didn't have a big narrative. Ek sapna dikhana hota hai na logon ko. Wo Congress ke pas nahi tha. And second, uh, they, for the first time, there was an OBC hawa in Madhya Pradesh. OBC mandalization is beginning to happen in Madhya Pradesh for the first time. Congress failed to align itself with that. But Barkha, having said all this, having given so much gyan, I must confess that the result, the extent of BJP's victory, 9% point, this is, this is something you can smell, we should be able to smell on the street. It's not one or two percentage point that anyone can miss. I in Hindi, I say that if you have 99 degrees, you can get the temperature of the But if you have 103, you can get the temperature of the So 9 percentage point ki victory, so it's like 103 temperature. It should be palpable on the street. Uh, but it wasn't. So I must confess, and I should say only this much, there is something that defies explanation in this particular verdict. Okay, uh, I'm going to take this to Yashwant. And in the meantime, Yogendra Ji, while we were able to get the essence of what you were saying, there was a slight crackle in your audio. So if you can just rejoin on the same link, we'll be maybe able to hear you better. The Ladli scheme uh, it was a big factor. The OPC uh, vote perhaps was a factor. But there is something that defies explanation. Yashwant, a lot of the polls also didn't pick up what happened in Madhya Pradesh. And I, we really, if we can change the slide to Madhya Pradesh and look at the numbers as we talk about them. Uh, Yashwant, uh, you know, you also were not able to uh, really gauge what was going to happen in uh, Madhya Pradesh. Uh, you know, when you listen to Yogendra Ji talk about the Ladli scheme, talk about the OBC factor, uh, but at the same time, he says it defies the explanation. Do you also feel that it defies the explanation? Because he's talking also yeah, about the perceived yeah, I, in a way. Yeah, in a way, yeah. it does, Varkha. In a way, it does. You know, I was uh, joking with Yoginji before the show started. Ki wow. to wahi khichdi Rajasthan mein banai, wahi Telangana mein banai, wahi Chhattisgarh mein banai. Because in Chhattisgarh also, I said it's too close to call, and BJP can even surpass the Congress because it was the overlapping the ranges. You know, but Madhya Pradesh mein meri khichdi galbar ho gayi, jo maine chadhai. Aur mujhe lagta hai ki maine usme ek muti dal kam dali, kyunki female voters I failed to read. What uh, Pradeep uh, was uh, clear in his reading that female voters in Madhya Pradesh are going one-sided and that will end up giving BJP probably 6 or 7 percent lead. It is even more than that, as Yuvindi has said. So I completely failed on reading the impact of uh, of uh, Larli Behna Yojana and that has probably done the trick. At the same time, the excess vote share probably also happened because of the BJP's strategy of sending all these big shots back to their districts. So, uh, and and uh, uh, and all of them actually were given uncomfortable seats to contest, uh, to be fair to them. They were not the best of the BJP seats that all these uh, uh, central BJP leaders which were going to contest in Madhya Pradesh are concerned. Uh, however, yes, it's it's puzzles, the, the, the kind of impact, because one thing which we could read from the tracker was there is no anti-incumbency, but there was fatigue. That is for sure. That as we have been saying for six months all along, that there is fatigue. There is no anger. Shivra Singh Chauhan is popular. There is no anger against his government, but there is fatigue. Somehow Congress could not, could not, just could not, uh, uh, you know, gain from that fatigue. They still managed to poll 40%, by the way, in all the three states, 
even their two sitting chief ministers managed to poll the same vote they voted last time when they won the election but it is the yeah. bjp which has taken in the larger vote share by most, most probably benefiting from the polarization by 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 polarization of the um, uh, you know of the state politics the others getting literally squeezed out look at the vote shares of of the others only in rajasthan the others vote share is intact that is largely because of uh, of rebel candidates not because of the institutional parties in rajasthan uh, in a big way so so yeah uh, in madhya pradesh when i when we go back to the drawing board for me as a pollster to learn is uh, is to to start uh, uh, polling extra for as far as the female samples are concerned and as yogenji being my senior in this field would tell you uh, interviewing female has a uh, female voters or female respondents in india is not really an easy task to begin with you know uh, but still that is a lesson for me to learn uh, having said that there are a lot many things lot many things uh, over and under the bridge in that way for to to yeah. take away uh, from these election results as a whole i believe that congress will find it really difficult to take solace in the telangana victory it will be difficult for them keeping in mind that six months down the lane they have to uh, face the lok sabha elections and mind you bjp is not winning the last two lok sabha narendra modi is not the prime minister because they failed to win telangana narendra modi is prime minister because he defeated congress hands down in the 200 odd seats where it is bjp versus the congress or rahul gandhi versus narendra modi of sorts so uh, telangana yeah. is hardly going to do magic for the congress as far as the contest six years six months down the lane is concerned can i take that to yogendra ji uh, one what does this do for national prospects uh, just even at the level of morale and uh, motivation i think we're seeing now a statement that has come from rahul uh, rahul gandhi hum basically saying hum swikar karte hain vichar dhara ki ladai jari rahegi telangana ke logo ko mera dhanyawad sabhi karyakarta ko unki mehnat aur samarthan ke liye dil se shukriya uh, it doesn't actually say very much i mean in a public statement you can't say very much more yogendra ji how do you see the impact uh you know what is the lesson for the congress what would you urge the congress to do at this point i mean if you take it statistically it doesn't make much of a difference to 2024 calculations uh there were 82 parliamentary seats at stake in today's four states congress last time had only six the bjp had 65 there is no way bjp can go beyond 65 in these seats but can go beyond 6 after the telangana verdict so finally congress will have something around 50 so technically you can and, and anyone who thought of defeating the bjp in 2024 or uh, restraining the bjp would not be banking on a big victory in rajasthan and madhya pradesh everyone knows and with gujarat these are bjp strong votes so in terms of sheer numbers it doesn't change the picture dramatically but in terms of perception it does because coming as it does just before the lok sabha election the it, it strengthens the perception that uh, well now it's bjp all the way so tomorrow when i go around speak to my friends colleagues i'm sure i would see lots of drooping shoulders i'm sure i would uh, meet people who say are abhi lage hue ab to chhod dijiye ab to kuch nahi hai iske andar so that's bound to happen this is something that we have to reckon with uh, in terms of what it would Uh, it makes their task more difficult and easy at the same time more difficult because of the obvious factor that bjp uh, now has the perception of being stronger than it was yesterday but easier in one strange sense that uh, the the realization that such a coalition is needed would be more than before and striking a deal would become easier than before Uh, with that realization a hopefully because the india coalition partners would now realize that it's a very tough battle and they better get their act together and overcome their small egos and second because no one party would be seen to be over dominating that might hopefully uh, smoothen the process of seat negotiation 
Yeah. Uh, can I ask you though, you said that the impact in numbers is not dramatic and I'll ask Yashwant in a second what he thinks of that but in perception it will be because there will be a lackluster sort of sentiment among cadres and that will be the toughest thing to achieve. Are you then saying that alliances for the Congress are more important than ever before? Is that the point you're making, Yogi Ji? Look, alliances are important but not in these states. Uh, these Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, these are not alliance states. These are straight away Congress BJP states. Yes, there was a scope for alliance in Rajasthan particularly. And one of the smaller reasons, uh, well, let me say one of the key reasons why Congress lost Rajasthan is its failure and almost which were right there on the table. One, an alliance with CPIM. Second, an alliance with BAP, Bharati Adivasi Party. Uh, both the absence of these two alliances has, on my last calculation, already cost the Congress 14 seats. So, yes, that was an issue. But alliances are more of an issue in states outside these. Alliances are more of an issue in uh, Maharashtra, Bihar, Jharkhand, UP. Um, and I indeed do hope so that uh, with BJP's perception being stronger, the opposition, when they meet on the 6th, uh, would be more conscious of the fact that they need to align. But may I say that they, what they need to do is more than just a seat adjustment. They need to come up with an agenda for this country, which they haven't so far. And they need to convert at least one or two points of their agenda into something concrete on the ground, uh, some kind of an action. These two are important. So they need to come up with an agenda and a plan. Before I go to Yashwant briefly, Yashwant disagrees totally. He just, he said it to me. He said it on Twitter. He is a north-south narrative. Hai. He doesn't agree with this at all. Aap is pe, uh, uh, aate hai. Prime Minister's statement is also out. We bow to the Janta Janardhan. The results indicate that the people of India are firmly with the politics of good governance that we stand for. Uh, a special thanks to the heart. Working party karyakartas. Uh, Yogendra ji, ye north south debate jo chal hai, uh, is pe where do you come in? I mean, the fact is that uh, BJP is not doing well in the south at all. Uh, the fact is that BJP's last hope of making a big breakthrough in a new south Indian state has been thwarted. BJP tried in uh, their first attempt, has been Karnataka, which has been stalled, not fully finished. Telangana was going to be their second very serious bit. BJP was about as serious about Telangana as they were about West Bengal. And they nearly thought that they were number, that they would make a bid for number one and settle for a decent number two. That was BJP's strategy, which they could convert in the Lok Sabha election. That has been thwarted, certainly. So to that extent, the BJP is limited in the South. But there is, you know, I mean, if you want to defeat the BJP, Keeping it outside South India is not enough. Obviously, something has to be done in Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, uh, and above all, Uttar Pradesh. Unless you do something here, nothing uh, BJP would remain as strong as it is. You, uh, uh, can I just bring in Yashwant? I know you're both on very sh short time. Uh, uh, but, yeah, but Yashwant, if you want to come in on why you strongly disagree with the north-south fault line that has been brought into the results uh, analysis today. Well, uh, yes, my, yeah. my my statistically speaking, my, my issue with the north-south divide was that uh, uh, it was giving a wrong impression of south as if, as if the people of south are thinking different the way from the people of north. Yes, I understand. It's a question of BJP versus the Congress in the largely the North Indian seats. I, I understand that. And I also understand that BJP lost the way in Telangana. That is right. But even for the Congress, largely it is Kerala centric politics. You know, beyond that, they are a big zero even in uh, in, in Andhra Pradesh, even in Tamil Nadu. Take, take, take the uh, DMK equation away and Congress is big zero even in Tamil Nadu. So... It is, it is uh, certainly uh, 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 important to understand, which what Yogendra Ji is underlining rightly, that there are more anti-BJP alignments clearly in the South at this point of time than in the North. That is true. But just the way he is rightly pointing out that defeats sometimes have their own sobering effect in seat alignment and going about it. 
and that works both ways what i see as an opportunity for the congress and the uh, uh, india alliance in the north of these defeats kind of putting them in a sobering effect and getting into the right set of seat adjustment for 2024 i see the similar openings for the bjp in fact bjp has been faster in understanding look at the way they weaved up the jds alliance right after the karnataka defeat and somehow i am sensing that right after this defeat in telangana uh, this is going to open a window of brs joining back the nda some way or the other either directly or indirectly i don't know at this point of time but uh, the way the speed at which the the bjp probably works on the uh, on the learnings and the strategies um, somehow that speed or that kind of clarity is right now missing i don't see that happening for example yogen ji is absolutely right about the small alliances in rajasthan same goes true as far as the perception is concerned even in 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 madhya pradesh you know the way uh, samajwadi party's uh, um, thing was kind of uh, left sided in that way that you know chodo yaar inko the the kind of and the, the reaction of sp even though they do not carry more votes it's not about the votes it's about it's about the what shall i say it's a, it's a, it's about the essence of how do you carry it you remember bakha left front was so dominating in west bengal is still whenever they got a chance they left for one seat for samajwadi party not just one seat they always oh. ensured that person who won from samajwadi party ticket even got a ministerial post in west bengal oh. so so the 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 left front leadership earlier you know uh, uh, till the point of time the left stalwarts were there they were very flexible and very adapting as far as the uh, ground equations were concerned and taking people along making a narrative they have lost that edge uh, as far as the congress is concerned even though uh as i mentioned earlier to you and i know probably yogin ji is going to disagree with me on this i genuinely believe that the uh, the the 40% odd vote share that the losing uh, uh leaders of the congress uh, pulled in these three states they had a lot to do with their own leadership they tried a lot to to wipe out the anti hindu image of their party they played intelligently on that i would say but somehow i fear that today's victory will be completely misread misunderstood by many of the strategists in the congress central leadership they would probably like they are likely to explain that uh, they won telangana because of their unwavering uh, brand of secular politics uh, which as i reminded you that that included giving the one sided uh, uh, you know uh, uh one sided comment after the uh, october 7th 8 uh, uh, events in, in in israel and they might misread that these three gentlemen were trying to be too hindu you know and that's why they lost the election i yeah. i have this sense and and i i know yogen ji would disagree with me on this but yogen ji trust me when you will talk to your talk to your your friends over there you are likely to get this sense do you are likely to get this sense and somehow i believe apart from every other narrative right or wrong i'm not going into that debate but congress has a problem at its hand that bjp has been successful at the national level branding the congress as an anti hindu party and it's a problem for the congress to correct, correct and counter that narrative their regional leaders have, leaders have been successfully trying that as mamta banerjee to arvind kejriwal and so many of the opposition leaders have time again proven that in india you can easily win with the pro muslim image there is no problem big number of hindus will vote for you if you have a pro muslim image that's not an issue at all but in india at this point of time that we talk in and live in electoral viability electoral sustainability is in question and doubt if you are going into the field with an anti hindu let me let let, let me just put let me just put this one gorilla in the room which the congress strategists have to address okay so 400 pound gorilla as a matter of fact you gained rajiv when when you were on our podcast you said that one of the i think you said teen cheezon ka hame jawab 
Hame means you meant the opposition nahi hai, uh, went to, as a counter to the BJP nationalism, the, the re religious debate and also the cultural rootedness debate. I'm paraphrasing you. You said it much more eloquently. Jab Yashwant uh, bolte hai ki, uh, you know, don't misread. Today, the Congress shouldn't go you know, to the left of center on religion, that these three losing chief ministers were able to be pluralistic yet Hindu. And they were trying to negate the anti-Hindu tag that the BJP has sometimes successfully attached to the Congress. Don't take the wrong message. What would you say? Uh, I was only disagreeing because I thought uh, it's highly unlikely that anyone would read such a message. Uh, because uh, as Yashwanji was playing, uh, somebody in your production department was playing out images, which negated. Mm. You know, the fact is, I think it would be silly to read uh, Telangana victory as a victory for sec hard secular stance. There is actually no evidence of that at all. Uh, after all, the, if you look at Raven Reddy's background, that itself negates it. Uh, uh, and uh, it would be. Uh, to my mind, weird to see the defeat in Rajasthan in Madhya Pradesh as a defeat of soft Hindus. But to my mind, these the issue of Hindu-Muslim relations and secularism was not foregrounded almost anywhere in this election. BJP tried, and in some localized situation, it did so. It succeeded in Tijara, in Rajasthan, a couple of other places, and so on. But that was nowhere center. Uh, so either way to see it as a reason for success in Telangana or to see it as a reason for failure in other places would be completely a mistaken reading, factually mistaken reading. And I'm sure a party like Congress would not make such a silly mistake. OK, so that's not the be that that's not the disagreement maybe that Yashwant uh, expected. In fact, Yugendraji is also saying that that should not be the interpretation. So wo jagra, uh, yeah, wo the argument nahi hai. 30 seconds concluding remarks to both of you. Uh, Yugendra ji, you've already said it's a setback. You've spoken about alliances with small parties. You've spoken about the need for an agenda. If you met Rahul Gandhi this evening, what is the one thing you'd say to him? Take a deep breath. Believe in yourself. And uh, do two or three things. Number one, be more harsh to your party within. And be more liberal and open to people outside outside means your allies and other possible allies uh, number two make sure that uh, what you say in your election rallies is actually what your worker says on the ground and number three make sure that those who the, the, the social profile of those who constitute your vote base aligns with the social profile of those who are your leaders that's interesting. And Yashwant, if I can ask you the same 30 seconds, what would you say? Would it be very different? Uh, I would I would just say that, you know, uh, the, I understand that uh, uh, you said that it's a plain vanilla tweet, but it wasn't a plain vanilla tweet. You know, uh, when the the tweet of Rahul Gandhi still carries that which jari rahegi, I think that itself somehow gives me a sense that is vichardhara ki ladai is again rooted in the same way i respect that i respect that but somehow uh, I, somehow in the present times i i, I feel that uh, uh, what yoginji is expecting that uh, uh, congress is not going to misread uh, you know i i still feel that they are going to if they cannot if they cannot misread uh, the 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 mandates of today uh, probably it will be better for them and uh, uh, self-belief and and countering and and then taking the junior role practically possible in the states not trying to punch above the weight you know like for example in up in bihar in bengal uh, whatever mamta Banerjee has to offer take it gracefully and contest with her uh, otherwise uh, probably if the ego of being a national party and how can we contest just on four seats in, in Bengal and just on five seats in UP, if that ego will come in their way, then then it's not going to help them. Uh, you know? okay. it's, it's time for them to, to, to practically iron out the alliances and iron out uh, the ground realities. Okay, uh, we could talk for hours, we, uh, but I know neither of you have that kind of time. So I'll just say thank you. I was, I've already taken more time than I had asked for. 
uh, I hope we can uh, talk more extensively Aram se in the next few days and talk about a lot more issues. So we'll have both of you back with us. Thank you so much, Yogendra Yadav and Yashwan Deshmukh. Always a pleasure and so much to learn from both of you. Thank you and take care. Thank you. Mojo Story has always made a commitment to its viewers to go to where the story is. And as you can see here, we are at the epicenter of the Israel war on Gaza. We are right at the front line about one mile from the Gaza Strip as the Israeli military gets ready with its tanks and its gunners to begin its final frontal assault that will take troops into Gaza. As we said, we are not like other organizations. We believe in giving you all sides of the story objectively and as much as possible from the ground. And that's exactly what we're doing here, covering the biggest global story today from the epicenter of the war zone. So please, we need your support. Support us, become a Mojo member, subscribe to us, spread the word and thank you for your support.